do God's work. And so I just thank her for giving me that opportunity, um, because without that, I wouldn't be standing here today. I'm going to talk to you about something that's a little bit different than I think what you um, typically hear at a CCDA conference. I'm going to talk to you about the business community and their role in Christian community development. And as I think about that, there are really two questions that need to be answered. The first question is, why should you as Christian community developers be concerned about the business community and what they're doing in terms of community development? And then I think the second question that needs to be asked is, what does, uh, how, why should the business community be concerned about helping out in the community? So I'm going to address the first question. Um, as I think about the first question of why should you as Christian community developers be concerned about what the business community is doing, I go to Psalms 24 and 1, and it says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in it. Well, as a Christian who's concerned about serving the needs of the poor, I have to look at that scripture and take it to mean that the resources that we have available to us are much, much greater than the resources that our ministries have, the resources that our church has, the resources that even our donors are giving us, that we've actually got access as heirs to God's kingdom. We have access to all the resources that, that are in this earth. Then if you think about who has those resources, it's the business community. The business community controls the vast majority of resources in this country and around this world. Just ask the terrorists who bombed the World Trade Center in September. They went after our businesses. Therefore, I have no choice but to think about how do I get access to their resources. If we're doing God's work and we want to glorify his kingdom and grow his kingdom, then we actually need to be thinking about how to get access to those resources. And so my answer to the first question is, is just that simple. So I'm going to spend the remainder of my time talking to you about why I think the business community ought to be concerned about doing Christian community development. Again, I go to the scriptures. Go to Matthew, the parable of the five talents. And let me read a little of it to you. It says, So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And we all know that the rest of that story goes on to say that there was another servant who had two talents. And he also brought two more talents besides the two that had been given. But there was one servant who had one talent. And what did he do? He buried that talent and did not produce a return on it. And if you skip further down in Matthew, in verse 30, it says, And you need to cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. So actually think about that. That one servant was the one who actually, he didn't lose any money. All he did was bring back what the master gave him. Think about what's going to happen to those who lose the master's money. I mean, they, I think that the outer darkness is actually something they should uh, strive for. Uh, you know, it actually sounds like a pretty good outcome for those people. So what I take away that to mean as well is that Christians are to be good stewards over the resources that are entrusted into them. And being good stewards, if you are a business person, means that you should seek rewards that are financial. I know that lots of times it's not popular for us to think about the business community when they're doing work to actually get a return on the money that they invest. When you look at the list of sponsors that comes in here, everybody says, oh, no, no, they shouldn't get a return. I actually think that's not correct because businesses are in the business of making money and business people are in the business of being good stewards over those resources that are entrusted in them, and that means to get a positive return. So, as Christians who are business people, then that says, I need to be thinking about a couple of things because we have burdens to, take, to do God's work, which means that I have to figure out how to do good by doing well by my company. There are many others in the business community, though, that aren't Christians and don't have that burden. But I tell you, I think the time is now where God is saying to them, I'm going to make you have a concern, and let me share with you why. I'd just like to take a couple of minutes 
and talk to you about um, my company. I'm a consultant with the Boston Consulting Group. We're a global management consulting firm with offices in, uh, with 50 offices in about 26 countries around the world. We tend to serve um, large, very large corporations called Global 1000 Companies, which are the equivalent of the Fortune 500 and Fortune 100 companies in the U.S. And we work with the presidents and CEOs and boards on what we call the CEO's agenda. So that might mean anything from companies that are merging uh, to increasing profitability, whatever issue the CEO is concerned about. Well, this past year, um, and I had an opportunity to provide some leadership to this, we launched a diversity practice area. What that means is we decided that diversity was a topic on the CEO agenda. And so, as you can see on the chart, there are a number of things that we look at. We'll do e-commerce, we do strategy, um, we work in a number of different industries. Well, we decided that issues related to diversity are actually on the CEO's agenda and that those issues actually span everything that happens in business. A little proof of that, companies nowadays are seeking to be recognized for, um, for being good in diversity. For the past three to four years, Fortune has published a list of the top 50 companies with respect to diversity. Now, I really don't have any expectation that you can read the list of all 50 companies that's on that screen. However, uh, you can note that the top, the number one company is highlighted there. That number one company is Advantica. For those of you who don't know who Advantica is, that's the parent company of Denny's. Well, think back to 1993 and, and what happened with Denny's, okay? Uh, Denny's, we know, had uh, a few law litigation issues uh, with respect to how they chose to treat their African-American customers. Well, the thing that people uh, know most about Denny's is that there was a $46 million lawsuit. That cost them a lot of money. There are a few other uh, lawsuits that have come up that are pretty, uh, pretty well known. The Texaco lawsuit, the issue of the jelly beans. Well, it cost Texaco $176 million. Um, most recently, Coca-Cola had to spend $192 million to pay out. At the beginning of this year, there was a threat of Microsoft having to pay out $5 billion. Well, that didn't materialize. However, I say that those payouts, while $46 million is a lot of money, while $192 million is a lot of money, the reason that this is a big issue for the CEOs is not necessarily the payouts. The bigger reason is that CEOs are judged based on what their market capitalization is, what the financial markets think about them. Well, Denny's, the, one, the thing that people don't talk about is, as a result of the lawsuit, their stock price went from $23 a share down to $3 a share. They lost 86% of the value of their company when that happened. Texaco, on the day the lawsuit was announced, lost half a billion dollars in market capitalization. That's going to get the attention of the CEOs. Because what's happening there is Wall Street, the financial markets, are sending a signal to corporate America that says, if you don't treat ethnic minorities in this country, if you don't take seriously and value the black, brown, and yellow faces in this country, I think you're doomed. I think that your long-term viability is at risk. I think the CEOs are starting to hear that. Let me tell you why Wall Street is sharing that information. Wall Street is concerned about this because the demographics in the United States are changing. Everybody keeps hearing about this in terms of the census that came out. Well, if you think about the projections, I mean, we know that already today in a number of the states, whites are the minority in a few of the states. Well, over the next 20 years, Ethnic minorities, and I'm only talking about African Americans, Hispanics, and Asians, will represent 80% of the new growth of this population. Over the next 45 years, that's going to be 90%. Just think about that. Corporate America, who's used to serving primarily white suburban customers, a white suburban marketplace, is now going to have to deal with a new America that 80 to 90% of the new growth is going to be other than whites. That's a big issue for them. And they're going to have to think about their long-term viability and what to do about it. In addition to the demographics changing, we can look at what's happening to 
to minority-owned businesses. Minority-owned businesses are the fastest growing business segment in the country. If you look at from 1997 to 2007, the projections for um, minority businesses, they're growing at 11.5%. May not sound like a big deal to you, but that's compared to 1.5% for businesses overall. The receipts of those businesses are growing at 21% a year. That means that there's a whole new set of competitors that corporate America is going to have to deal with, and that set of competitors is now starting to look a lot more like the demographics of the United States. So that's an issue. The third and most compelling issue is our money. Ethnic minorities today have a spending power of $1 trillion. It's trillion with a T. Over the next 20 to 40 years, that's expected to quadruple. That's a lot of money. And so they're going to have to figure out how to address those markets. So still, I guess you're saying, I've been talking a lot about ethnic minorities in general and those markets. What's that have to do with Christian community development? Well, let's talk about why urban markets are important to corporate America. Minority populations, as we all know, are disproportionately concentrated in the urban markets. Urban markets are important to U.S. companies for lots of reasons. So it's not just the dollars that the ethnic minorities are going to spend with those companies. It's the influence that they have on the markets around the world. I'll just give you an example. Rap music. The number one consumers of rap music. Most people would assume that that is black urban youth. Not true. Number one consumers of rap music are white suburban teens. Number two consumers of, of rap music, Japanese youth. African American youth come third. What happens in New York City, what happens in Chicago, what happens in Washington, D.C., what happens in L.A. is influencing how these companies are going to do business all over the globe. The urban markets matter and the urban markets are brown. And so corporations are going to have to think about that. So that means that as they do business, they're going to have to change their paradigm. Beforehand, corporations were able to deal with people like you who are sitting in the room by saying, oh, here are a few donations here and there. And this is a nice thing to do, and it's socially good, and I can give you token amounts of money, and everything will be fine. Well, they're not saying that anymore. They're not saying that anymore because there's a new paradigm. They've got to figure out how to make money. They've got to figure out how to link all of their activities, their urban marketing, their ethnic marketing, their corporate philanthropy, their community involvement is all linked to how they're going to make money. And as I said before, I think that's okay because they're called to be good stewards of the resources that are around that they're responsible for. So I think that's why it's important. Well, as you're serving an ethnic community, we do business a little bit differently. If I look at what are the kind of five major pillars of success for corporations in dealing with these markets, there are a few. It's ethnic consumer needs and behaviors. They know how to do those things. That's quite easy. Con ethnic consumer marketing, who the trade proposition is, what are those businesses that you're going to do business with, what's your internal organization going to look like, but also what is your ethnic community connection. Corporations are starting to learn that it is very important that if you are going to serve our communities, you must address and respect and value and seek the input of the grassroots leadership of our communities. That grassroots leadership are the people sitting in this room. The number one groups that they talk about supporting when they think about coming into a market and understanding and wanting to serve and capture share in those markets, they talk about coming to the churches and the nonprofits and the civil organizations. That's why it's important. That's why these people are going to start calling you. And I actually think that you have the opportunity. I mean, this is a wonderful opportunity for this group to actually think about what you can do to use their resources. So I just have three takeaways for you this morning. One is don't limit your thinking about the resources that you have available to you because the earth is the Lord's. It's not just your budget is not only the, the only thing that's the Lord's. The entire earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. And so you need to dream bigger. Whatever your budget is, I bet it's too small. 
Whatever you can envision, I bet your vision is too small. You know, we're, we're talk, Wayne the other night mentioned that Adams Mark Hotel might sue CCDA. Don't worry about it because it's God's problem where the money's coming from because God didn't say the CCDA only has its budget in order to pay that bill if, that, if it comes to pass. We have the resources of the entire earth and it's just us, up to us to think about it, to dream it, and to ask God for it. The second is that you should desire that the businesses that work with you get a return. It really is, not, is more than just a nice to have when we list the sponsors up here of any of our events. In your program, we list those sponsors for a reason. We're not asking you to take that program and throw it away. We're asking you to take that program and look at it and figure out who those businesses are and be a blessing to them because you do want them to be in this for the financial reasons. Let me explain why. I, I, I'm assuming that most of you can attest to the fact that, corporate, that giving in general is down right now because the economy has turned sour. Well, if companies are in the business of doing this for social responsibility issues, then they're gonna stop giving when the economy's down. They're gonna stop giving when things are tight. However, if they're in the business of making money, then they're gonna do it because it makes good business sense. Economy's good, the economy's bad. And I don't believe that God said that we're called to do his work only when the economy's good. I think he called us to do his work in good times and bad times. I just don't believe that when God tells me that all things are possible through Christ Jesus and that the entire earth is his and the fullness thereof, that that means that a stock market crash or a plane running into the World Trade Center is going to stop us from doing his work. So we need to be a blessing. We need to be a blessing, a financial blessing, not just, not just a, oh, that was a nice pat on the back. But, you know, at DLF, we have a whole lot of partners who work with us. They do landscape and they help paint our houses, all these builders. They, the insurance people come in and give us money and the banks help finance our families. Well, they're not making lots of money off of that. But, you know, when I built my house, the first person I called to paint it was the guy who has come out four years in a row and bought his crew and spray rigs and has helped us paint houses in the inner city. That's the first person that I call. When I need some landscape and I say, okay, who's helped us in the past? I pull out the brochure that we have and say, who has sponsored a CCDA conference? Who has helped? That's why corporations do this and we need to in turn be a blessing. <laughs> Lastly, I would just encourage us to continue to have our dollars reflect our beliefs, our value systems, and the fact that we stand for social justice. You can need to ask the Adams Mark Hotel. We're not standing in their grand ballroom today because we didn't believe that they valued us. They, they only valued our dollars. They did not value us as people. They did not value our, our beliefs. They did not value us as human, and that's an issue. And we need to continue to have our dollars speak for us. Is if we ever give that up, then there's no reason the corporations should come help. And what we're doing when we go stay at the Adams Mark Hotel, when we go support businesses that have nothing to do with us, when we, even worse, have the businesses that are sponsors for us, and we don't support those businesses, and we don't become a blessing for them, then they stop supporting us. And if they stop supporting us, then that says that we are not using all of God's resources that are available for us to do our work, and I think that's a sin. We need to be about doing God's business. We need to dream bigger. We need to gain access to all of the resources that are here. Now, the thing that I didn't talk about was the, uh, how difficult it's going to be to work with businesses. I'm not going to address that today because right now, um, that's what the business track is all about. There are six workshops taking place today that are going to talk about all of those issues. It's going to talk about how you think about giving your money wisely, how you think about making investments in the inner city, how you actually think about doing profitable business in an inner city area. If you're a small or medium-sized business, how in the world do you think about what role you can play and still be profitable in your business? That's what the business track is, is uh, going to do today. And I just thank you for your time and patience.